Okay, so what causes the x-rays to be absorbed, all right? And that's what we're going to talk about next. Well, there are three mechanisms that cause x-rays to be absorbed in tissue or in the body, and these are the three. All right, now these are described in detail elsewhere. I mean, the photoelectric effects, obviously, we met last year when we were doing quantum mechanics. Hair production, we've met a little tiny bit when we were doing um, nuclear fusion in stars. Uh, Compton scattering, we possibly haven't met yet so far. So we're going to describe these three absorption mechanisms for x-rays. So the first one um, is the photoelectric effect. Uh, now in terms of medical physics, what happens is this. Okay, um, it's quite simple really and it just um, involves ionization. And it only applies to x-rays of energy less than 100 keV. All right. So the incident X-ray comes into the atom, all right, it's incident in this direction, and it interacts with an electron in such a way that the electron absorb, absorbs all of the X-ray's energy. So all of the X-ray photon's energy. Oops, excuse me. Is absorbed. Okay, so the x-ray is completely absorbed by the electron and that gives it extra energy and it is actually removed from the atom. In effect, what you've done is you've ionized this atom, okay, in the body. Now that's clearly dangerous because ionization of body tissue is not a good idea, um, but we need to keep the dose fairly low in order to prevent problems happening from this mechanism. All right, but the photoelectric effect causes an ionization within the atom and all of the x-ray's energy is absorbed. The x-ray disappears. There is no photon after this interaction. Okay, so that's one way in which the x-rays are absorbed. Uh, the second way is what we call Compton scattering, which is almost the same as the photoelectric effect. But in this case, the, um, the, the x-ray photon is... It interacts with an electron, but not all of the energy is used up. So the electron is still removed, the atom is still ionized, but there's a little bit left over, okay? And that little bit left over is re-emitted as a lower energy photon, all right? So this high energy, high frequency X-ray photon interacts with the electron sufficiently to give the electron enough energy to remove it from the atom, but the X-ray photon has more energy than is needed to do that and therefore it is re-emitted uh, the extra energy is re-emitted as a lower energy photon uh, possibly an ultraviolet visible infrared and so on further down the electromagnetic spectrum okay now obviously in order to do this rather than the photoelectric effect the incident x-ray photon must have more energy um, and it the Compton scattering effect is very prominent in the range 500 keV to 5 MeV, so 500 kilo electron volts to 5 uh, mega electron volts. Okay. The third one is completely different uh, and is called pair production. Now, this is a quantum mechanical effect that happens all over the place, uh, but in terms of X ray. Uh, absorption what happens is the x-ray comes in it doesn't interact with one of the electrons in the outer shell all it does is it interacts with the electric field of the nucleus all right so in it comes and spontaneously spontaneous um, mass energy Oops, transfer. Okay, so as it interacts with the electric field, one of the things that can happen is the ec the energy in the X-ray can actually be transferred into mass, all right, into matter, spontaneously, and this is governed by the relationship of e equals m c squared, uh, which we've looked at in terms of uh, nuclear processes, nuclear fission and fusion. All right, so that mass-energy relationship occurs here as well. 
And what is produced in the place of the X-ray energy is a matter-antimatter pair. Okay? The X-ray disappears from existence completely and an, an electron and a positron are produced. And those electron and posit that electron and positron pair uh, whiz off in opposite directions, effectively. All right? And this is called pair production for obvious reasons. The energy of the photon is converted into matter, uh, and that matter manifests itself in terms of a matter-antimatter pair of an electron and a positron. All right? And that's another way that the, the X-rays are absorbed by the body tissues. Okay, so all three of these types depend on various things. They depend on the energy of the X-ray, all right, and they depend on the atomic number of the atom in the body body tissue, all right. So we're talking about the different types of isotopes. Whoops, excuse me. Different type of isotopes or um, nuclei, different type of elements. All right, so here we have the three attenuation mechanisms, the photoelectric effect, the Compton scattering, and the pair production. These are the typical ranges of X-rays um, that, re that are required to generate this type of attenu attenuation mechanism. So you can see that for very low energy X-rays, the photoelectric effect is dominant. For high energy X-rays, the Compton scattering effect is dominant. And for pair production, you need at least 1.02 MeV. That's because the mass of a positron plus the mass, sorry, I'll just do that again. Um, the mass of a positron plus the mass of an electron are equivalent to an energy of 1.02 MeV. Okay. And so you need at least that amount of energy in order to produce these two masses. All right. And here's a brief description of, uh, or summary of what happens to the photon and how it's attenuated, how it's absorbed. Uh, now, the relationship between the attenuation coefficient, i.e. how good an attenuator it is, how good an, an, absorb, uh, how good an absorber the tissue is, and the atomic number is given here. So for the photoelectric effect, the attenuation coefficient is very sensitive to atomic number. All right, so if the atomic number doubles, i.e., you go from, um, you know, um, well, hydrogen to helium, for example, not that there's much helium in the body, um, you, the attenuation coefficient will go up by 2 to the power 3. All right, very sensitive. For Compton scattering, because you're using very high energy X rays, the attenuation coefficient is independent of the atomic number. It doesn't care what atom it hits, effectively, or what type of atom it hits. Uh, repair production is sort of intermediate. All right, so the attenuation coefficient is proportional to the square of the atomic number. All right. Now, what this means for these two is that elements with higher atomic number are much more likely to absorb X-rays. The attenuation, the absorption, is much stronger in much much stronger in atoms of high atomic number. Now if you consider what type of atoms are in tissue and what type of atoms are in bone, you know in tissue uh, you've got things like carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, hydrogen, things like that. They're all fairly low atomic numbers, all right? Uh, six, seven, eight. Hydrogen is obviously just one. But in bone, I'll just write that down here, you've got things of much higher atomic number. You've got things like calcium. Alright? With much higher atomic number. And that is one of the reasons why the absorption coefficient is much higher in bone, because the atomic number of some of the atoms in the bone is much higher. Okay. Now the relationship between the attenuation coefficient and the energy is a bit more complicated. The attenuation coefficient in the photoelectric effect mechanism is proportional to 1 over E cubed. So if your energy, if the energy of your photon goes up, the energy of your X-ray goes up, i.e. you use high energy X-ray, the attenuation coefficient will go down very sharply. Alright, because it's proportional to 1 over E cubed. And that's one of the reasons why at high energy 
this isn't a particular particularly important effect. You have to have low energy photons in order to to have this attenuation mechanism, and this is why. All right, as the as the energy goes up, the attenuation, the absorption drops very quickly. In terms of the Compton scattering mechanism, um, the oh, sorry about that, the attenuation decreases slowly with E. All right, so there's not much change, and with the pair production, the attenuation rises slowly with E. So as E goes up, the attenuation rises, but only slowly. And that's it. Thanks for listening.